Um, so, my name is Amitai Schleier. Uh, this is going to be kind of an interactive talk because uh, I've spent my whole life preparing for it, which is another way of saying that I haven't specifically prepared for this. And so, uh, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to explain kind of as quickly as I can uh, what IkiWiki is by means of things that you probably know that are similar to it but different. Uh, I'm going to kind of zip through that and show you some examples and show you some code that exists that I've written really fast. And then, uh, because it's Sunday morning and I'm wearing bad idea jeans, I'm going to try some live coding. So I'm going to need your help because I'm sure that I'm going to screw up. Uh, and so let's, let's get to where that I can, I can fall over in public writing some code. So this talk is called uh, Web Architecture for Unix Lovers with IkiWiki. I'll talk about why I titled it that specifically when we get to the end. But first, uh, what is IkiWiki, other than a funny name? Uh, it's kind of onomatopoetic, which means that it conveys a feeling of grossness in the sound of the word. At least I think so. Uh, and that's because the person who wrote it, Joey Hess, a longtime Debian developer until a couple days ago, uh, had an antipathy and has an antipathy for things that get you stuck in a web browser. He'd rather not. He'd rather be in a terminal. And I think that's something that appeals to a lot of us here. So IkiWiki is his way of saying, I would rather not have to work that way if I don't have to, and I'd like to write a wiki where I don't. It's also palindromic. If, it's, if you read it forward and backwards and you discount the fact that the Ks don't go the same both ways, then it's a palindrome. And it's really hard to explain fully. It's really easy to explain part of it. It's kind of like the blind men and the elephant story, where each of them is feeling, I'm feeling the leg, but I don't know that I'm missing the tail, and vice versa. It just does a lot of things. And if someone told me that IkiWiki did these 79 features, I would be skeptical on the one hand, because that seems like an implausible claim. Uh, and I'd also have a hard time understanding coherently how those things would belong in one piece of software. So that's, you know, when I tried to learn what it was a long time ago, it was kind of overwhelming. And on the one hand, I was motivated by the seeming amazing functionality that it had, but I was also intimidated by how could that possibly be true. So I'm going to try to slice it differently so that it makes sense compared to things you know a little bit at a time. So uh, if I do this talk right, you're going to understand IkiWiki mentally a lot faster than I did. So here's something that IkiWiki is not. It's not MediaWiki, but it's sort of like that. Uh, it's got the word wiki in it, so that's kind of a freebie. Um, you can write in wiki markup. There's a recent changes. There's a revision history for each page. Let's cut over to where I have one. Here, here's a not media wiki. And you can see there's a sandbox, and I can click edit, and it's got this. Oh, that's a fabulous demo. Okay, well, that had worked. Uh, there's recent changes. Um, come back to that in a minute. And so it's, it is web editable. I was just saying a second ago that it's possible to use this without a browser, but it's also possible to use it with a browser. And that's a pretty traditional use case. Um, there's a search box. You can search through things. Uh, you can make it so that people have to log in before they edit, or you can not make it so that they have to do that, whichever you prefer. You could make certain pages be locked. Uh, you could have discussion about a page that's off to the side from the page if you want to. Uh, you can figure out which page is linked to this one. All this stuff is standard wiki stuff going back to Ward Cunningham, C2 wiki, use mod 1999, whatever. Uh, so wiki wiki does that, and that was kind of the original use case. Now, uh, that's one. Oops, here. Uh, another thing that wiki wiki is not is WordPress. But it's sort of like that. Uh, you can make a blog. Uh, you could have feeds like RSS and Atom. You could have comments that people can put on there. Uh, there can be a sidebar. There can be a tag cloud in it. There can be a calendar-style archive about you know, when were the posts posted. Um, so it, it does that as well. And I think I have an example of that in no particular order. Yeah. So here's not WordPress. You can see that there are feed links. There's a calendar style archive, all those things I was talking about. There are no tags because I have not written very much yet. But here's a post, and um, here's a comment. Hi, everyone. Let's see if this demo goes better than the last one. This is definitely going to work. 
Hey, cool. Uh, good news. So uh, something I didn't mention earlier that then forms a contrast with what just happened is that this is static content. When you load these pages, they are HTML and CSS from the file system. But nonetheless, even though IkiWiki is sort of a static site generator, I was able to click on this comment link and bounce through a CGI and write something that was then posted to the site. So this is the f like the main wrinkle with IkiWiki that you have to wrestle with is that it is a static site generator, like a lot of other ones, but it's not only a static site generator. It also lets you make content dynamically or take actions dynamically. And that's what just happened here. Uh, so typically with the static site generator, if you want comments on your site, you got to have Discus or some external commenting service. You do not have to do that here. In fact, what's going on behind the scenes is that I have a Git repository that stores my static content and the comments that were added via the web content. So I could have written that comment just as well with VI if I wanted to, and Git committed it and Git pushed it, and there's a post-update hook that regenerates the content when you do that. So uh, this is right around the part where when I started learning IkiWiki, my mind was getting blown. So is anybody's mind blowing at the moment, or is this reasonable? Good? Yeah, a little bit of both? Yeah. Uh, we're going to play with it a little bit so you can see exactly what I mean. Uh, another example of something I could do here is, uh, in addition to not being WordPress, IkiWiki is not text pattern or, uh, or any other of those. Drupal, things that aren't cool anymore. Uh, you can put in, uh, like text pattern invented this format called textile, that before markdown was cool, textile was cool. And you can very easily put textile input if someone happens to write in that format and send it to you. You can put that in IkiWiki as well. And in fact, uh, the way that you teach IkiWiki to handle input of different formats is what I'm going to live code in a few minutes. Uh, IkiWiki is sort of like GitHub pages, but it's not. Uh, it's static mostly, and you can push to it, and then content appears, and it wasn't very complicated for you. Uh, and therefore, it's also sort of like Jekyll, which is the system that makes that work, uh, except that you run it yourself. It's sort of like Octopress, which is built on Jekyll. So if these are things you've heard of, and you have a mental model of them, then IkiWiki is similar but different to them. Catalyst, uh, it's probably the most different from something like Catalyst, or Modulicious, or Dancer, or Rails in that IkiWiki is mostly better at static stuff. It's mostly not going to help you with dynamic stuff, but it can. Because there is a CGI that you can optionally turn on, that's where the search feature comes from, that's where the comment feature comes from, and you can hook your own actions into it. So you probably don't want to do any fancy URL kind of routing in there, but you can do actions of your choosing uh, in IkiWiki dynamically. So just to compare and contrast the, the process of extending these systems, because we're a lot of programmers here. Uh, WordPress, I don't really know. I never tried to administer one. I don't really like it. But I would imagine that you'd have to set up a second instance with a similar configuration and convince yourself that it was a similar configuration without having the benefit of configuration management tools. Somehow get confident about that. And then write something probably in PHP, run it in the browser, debug it in the web server error log, beat yourself over the head, and eventually it works, and then try it in prod and see if it still works the same. That's what I imagine. I don't know. Anybody actually done that? It's probably about right. Uh, GitHub pages you don't extend. Uh, that's the whole point. They run the service for you. They run Jekyll for you. So if you want it to work differently, you run your own Jekyll instance. It's not GitHub pages anymore. Uh, and Catalyst, I think we actually understand. You could write some tests first. It could be nice, a nice way to work. Uh, you could make sure that what you're doing is what you meant, and then it's going to work before you do it. So IkiWiki is its own thing that is the same as itself, at least at the present moment it is the same as itself right now. And it can be used to make static sites and some dynamic sites, like I was saying. You wouldn't want to use it for purely dynamic sites. It's written in Perl, which is why I'm talking about it here. You can, uh, when you're managing sites that are developed with IkiWiki, you can add the content with your favorite text editor or the web browser either way as you want. You can commit it directly into revision control, or you can have the browser save it for you, which turns into a commit, as you prefer. Uh, if you want to extend the system, it has an API, which is, of course, accessible in process in Perl. And what's a little bit surprising is that most of the API is accessible outside the process in any other programming language you want over XML RPC. So we're not going to look at that part today, but we are going to extend it. 
So some examples right about now would be handy. Yeah? So let's see. Uh, a couple that I won't show you and then a few that I will. Uh, my personal wiki is a really good example of uh, a use case for a wiki that you couldn't do easily very many other ways. So I have a web server running on this laptop on localhost. Uh, it's a very simple one and I have a wiki where it's a clone from my virtual private server that's in a central location. And in the clone, uh, I change the configuration slightly so that it's a post commit hook rather than a post update hook. And I can work offline. I can edit this wiki uh, without being connected to anything at all. Like on an, on an airplane or whatever, write what I need to write, document what I need to document, uh, you know, figure out what I'm going to do tomorrow and write it down. Uh, and then when I get back online, get push and I'm, you know, I'm synced up somewhere. Uh, and so that's, that's something that's hard to imagine doing with anything else called wiki. Uh, or anything else called blog, or maybe even you know a content management system of a traditional kind. It's a pretty special option to have. Uh, in my last job, we had a wiki that was built with AkiWiki that we uh, we managed our sprint backlog, our product backlog. We had tools that would grep through those for the specific format where we were writing our story points. Uh, if you were here for the last talk, uh, I am a software development coach. So uh, the guy was saying that if you can't do, you coach. Uh, I think if you can just barely do, then you can coach, and that's where I come from. I've just barely figured out how to do things, and I want everybody to know about it. So, uh, so we had a system where uh, a much lower friction thing for our development team than Jira, and I don't even know the tools we didn't use because we didn't use them. Just stay in the terminal where you're writing your code and switch to a different editor session and put something in or out of WikiWiki and get back to work. Uh, so I can't show you those, but I will show you is... Uh, this is a pretty interesting situation. Uh, I couldn't figure out how to do this site any other way besides IkiWiki. So I went to Columbia University. Uh, I graduated a few years ago with a music degree. Again, why I'm coaching. <laughs> and uh, uh, the Philolexian Society is a literary and debate society. It's not a very serious one. It's like the Monty Python version of that. Uh, but they have a website, and it was it was not really representative of the full glory of this group that I was part of, which is one of the oldest literary societies in the country. And the website looked like it was also one of the oldest websites in the country. Uh, it hadn't really been edited since 1999, other than maybe the front page every now and then. And the reason for that is that we had this, uh, we had a combination of, of political and technical problems, like you do. One was the technical problem, which is that uh, in order to edit the site, you had to, you know, no HTML. And uh, you had to have access to do that. And the political problem is that we only elected, uh, once per semester, one or two people who were the ministers of Internet Truth, who were able to go in and have the permission to edit that. And so, at any given time, there were one or two people who were allowed to change the pages. They're probably not going to do very much. And so we had this site that just rotted for ten years. It was pretty embarrassing. I didn't like it. So I said, well, what can I do if the campus web server that we're given space on only allows static content, but I want everybody in this group to be able to update this site? How can I do that? Hmm. And I already knew IkiWiki at this point, so I had the feeling like it's almost there. It almost does what I want. If I were to have a Confederate server off to the side that could run you know, an IkiWiki process and regenerate the content and maybe rsync it to the server where it needed to live, then that would do the job. So that's what happened. I wrote a very small plugin, rsync, which I can show you exactly how tiny it is. That's the page about it, and the code is in here somewhere. This one, this is the entire rsync plugin. Uh, it's not even that interesting. It just has one hook that it ties into, and all it does is run the command you configured, which is probably something like rsync-qa, whatever, whatever, whatever. So I wrote that plugin, and I hooked it up to our site, and I got a Confederate server from an alumnus who had free space available. And this is the website, and it's at columbia.edu, even though you cannot have dynamic content there, it is dynamic. And I can go edit, and you'll notice it's going somewhere else. It's going to wiki.philo.org, which is a different server where the CGI runs, and it seems like it's more than a little bit slow, but it does work. Uh, another plugin that I wrote is the one that makes this part work. Uh, Columbia has a federated CAS-derived authentication called WIND, and I wrote a plugin 
that teaches AkibaKey to use it. And in a moment, I will be logged in other than whatever happened here. These are great demos today, folks. Only the best. Uh, but I am logged in, and I could edit, and that would work. So that was able to solve a problem. There's also a second wiki that is private that I'm not going to show you anymore because only full Philoxians can see. But the same, the same authentication plugin and the same rsync plugin were used to make it work. Um, besides that one, uh, NetBSD is an open source operating system that I'm involved with. And uh, for various reasons, uh, mainly to do with the size of our repository, which Eric Raymond wrote about recently, uh, we're stuck on CVS, which is pretty crappy. I think that's what the C stands for. But uh, that's where we're stuck. And, uh, and we have a terrible web content management system for the website for NetBSD, which again has the impact that uh, developers who know things about the system are hesitant to bother writing them down because it's more annoying than it's worth. So again, we have this problem that the website doesn't represent the thing. Again, I think, well, what could I do about that? Oh, icky wiki, right? Uh, and it met all these constraints that we have of things that we could use, except that it didn't integrate with our particular archaic revision control system. So, uh, conveniently, IkiWiki has an API for that. It, you know, it prefers Git today, but it preferred Subversion a while ago, and preferred is just that everybody uses that one. It's not a privileged status within the system. Uh, but so there's an API, and I figured out, even for things like cook me a change set so I can show it in recent changes. I figured out how to get CVS to do that well enough with some third-party tools. So I was able to implement the API, and now we were able to have an NetBSD wiki that works well and integrates with our crappy revision control system, and we don't have to solve that problem in order to solve the next one. We still have to solve it uh, later. Uh, and then finally here, uh, an example that I can show you is Higher Order Perl, which is a proof of concept that I did a while ago. Uh, that uh, uses the existing formatting code that was used to make the book, just merely glues it in a terrible way to IkiWiki, just as a proof of concept. And that one is over here. And you can see sort of, like some formatting has happened. <laughs> some of it even looks sort of reasonable, like here. That, that looks sort of like probably what was wanted. Even, yeah, this looks reasonable. So it needs some work, but the idea was I didn't want to, you know, re-implement that code. I wanted to glue it. I didn't really know what I was doing, and I had about 15 minutes, and I wanted to just throw something at the problem. So uh, that is going to illuminate what we're going to do in a few minutes, that you can teach a Kiwiki about any input format that you might happen to have, whatever it is. So uh, I talked about the CVS plugin. I showed you the rsync one. Let me just show you the length of the CVS one. Uh, I don't recommend trying to read it. So it has to implement a bunch of API hooks because it's a revision control system, so these are all mandated things. Uh, there's a bunch of setup configuration, like where is CVS web, what is the shape of the history and diff URLs, because IkiWiki doesn't re-implement its own revision history or its own recent changes, it hooks into whatever your revision control system does for that. Uh, so these are all implementations of the API calls. Oh yeah, and that's the NetBSD wiki which uh, this illustrates something that you haven't seen yet, which is that you can style an IkiWiki site to look like anything. Uh, we styled this to look like the main NetBSD website because someday it will be that. So it looks a lot like this, except that it has you know, the wiki sidebar and actions. But if you look at how this page was constructed, it's not our Baroque XML system, it's Markdown. Uh, something that I contributed to IkiWiki is called Fancy Podcast. That's just what I decided to call it. IkiWiki already had podcasting support because it had support, like I was saying, orthogonal tools for generating feeds from any collection of pages and for whatever it doesn't know how to convert to HTML, including as is. And so you'd wind up with, if you wanted, uh, you know, like throw a bunch of MP3s or PDFs or whatever into a directory, write an inline directive, and what you get is the simplest possible feed with the enclosures of the things that you put there. There's no show notes, there's no descriptions, there's no whatever else, but it is technically a podcast. You could subscribe to it. When something new happens, you'd get it. So I wanted fancier podcasts because I want to move my personal website, which has podcasts with show notes, to IkiWiki. And so I needed feature parity with that. 
Uh, and so there's a blog post I have that uh, I can send the link out or put it in the slides about how I test drove a Kiwiki from the state that it was in to having fun some podcasts. Uh, a couple of quick things that I've written also, Mandoc uh, calls out to the Mandoc program to format man pages into HTML. Uh, word count will either let you put a directive in a page so you can get the word count where you put the directive, or you can put it in a template so that all your pages get it. Unix auth is a terrible idea, don't use it, but I needed it privately somewhere. Uh, it makes your, your wiki users hit Etsy password. Don't. Uh, WindAuth is that, is that uh, federated web authentication I demonstrated poorly. And Nimble is an input format plugin. You know, I saw that come up recently and I made it. Again, that's foreshadowing what we're about to do. So it's Sunday morning. Uh, just by being awake this early and claiming that I know what I'm talking about, I'm exhibiting bad judgment. We don't have a lot of time. How much time do we have? Halfway. Perfect. Uh, so we'd better test drive this because otherwise, God help me. Uh, so I heard yesterday in the keynote about this swim input format that Ingi invented, and I thought, that's interesting. I bet I could teach Icky Wiki to do that, and then I'd have a topical demonstration. So um, let's try to have a topical demonstration. Ding, 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 ding. Any questions so far? Just shout out Schmanz and say you're a weirdo and ask your question. Yeah. Well, um... You're asking if IkiWiki uh, connects to a database in some way? It can. Uh, in general, if that's what you want to do, it's probably the wrong system, but it's allowed. Uh, I mean, the, for me, the virtue of IkiWiki is that, uh, you know, if, if I corrupt its, its database with its internal state, then I still have my content in files in the file system, I still have the generated content in files in the file system, uh, if IkiWiki loses the ability to function itself, then I could edit that HTML some other way or convert it to another format. Uh, there's no dependency on the database, which for me is part of the draw. But because it has a dynamic ability in the CGI, you could hook that in if you wanted to. Or, uh, you know, if you, have, if you have a problem that IkiWiki solves most of, but not all of, you could, for instance, uh, inline some, some PHP or embedded Perl calls in your page templates or in specific pages. And IkiWiki would leave that for the web server to run, and then the web server would run it. But for me, in general, uh, the use case, the shape of the use case for IkiWiki is that I don't want to have that problem. So if I do, I probably want something else. Yeah. Anything else? Okay, this should be fun. Uh, is that big enough for everyone? Maybe a little bigger? Yeah. Okay. I have some notes for myself so that I'm not actually having to think accurately the entire time. Uh, so the first thing that came to mind yesterday when I was trying to figure out how would I make this work is uh, I need those swim plugins and I got those installed. Uh, I have that in my Perl path so I can say, you know, I think it was like this. Yeah, so that's not horrible. That's the beginning of something. Uh, but I don't really know how to hook that up and get HTML out of it, so I think the first thing I need to do if I want to learn where I'm going is write a test that tells me whether given you know, an input string it comes out as HTML. That'll tell me that at least I wired it up right. So, this is a test. And I'm going to say that I want something like uh, I want to be able to say swim to HTML somewhere on this kind of text. And I want to be able to get back, I would guess, something like that. That seem like a sensible test? Like if I did this right, that's probably how it works. Yeah, so there's no swim to HTML. 
Cool. How many of you have seen or done TDD before? Uh, seen what? Test-driven development? Is that a thing that people do? Cool. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my survival tactic. I have to, or I die. Uh, so here we go. Uh, the simplest way I can make that pass right now would be to steal this. Oops. Yeah, so that's cheating. Cool. That test would work if I did a better job. Let's do a better job. Uh, so I read up in the swim documentation, and I think I know it works something like this. Uh, hmm. Oops. I think I'm going to need pegx parser and swim, oops, yeah, swim grammar and swim HTML. I think those are the three that I need, and the reason I think that is that the way I think this works is that I will take some input and make a pegx parser and actually I'm going to call parse on it once I've got one with that input and it needs a grammar thingy which looks like this and it needs a receiver thingy swim can do a lot more than I need I just need the part where I get HTML back Okay, so that probably gets me some HTML back, if I did it right. Nope. Right, I forgot to use these modules, huh? Okay. Please feel free to stop me at any time saying, what the hell are you doing? Yes? So you put everything in, a, in an array, and then you're using, but you, it'll, will it give you the list of what you're missing in one shot? Uh, you mean as I as I try if to load these? You didn't these? have two of those. Would it give you a list saying you need two of those installed? Uh, no, it would just bail out on the first one. Okay. I, the the point of this, I'm probably not going to keep this test once I have it working. I'm trying to learn how do I wire this up, okay. and then I'll probably throw out that. Yeah. Because uh, I, I mean, once I get it wired up, I trust the swim processor to do whatever it's supposed to do to my text. Sure. Just want to make sure I got it wired up. Yeah. Uh, and there are going to be dependencies in my modules, so I want to know what they're going to be. Yeah. Uh, Mm. Mm, something like that. I don't know. Okay, closer. Uh, I'm off by a new line, so let's just say I expect that instead. Sweet. Checking that in. Uh, we can convert basic swim to HTML. Nice. So what should I do next? I, I managed to wire up swim. I think I get HTML out. It was a really simple example. Maybe I should do a slightly more complicated example. But I'm a little short of time, so I'll tell you that a more complicated example would also work. Uh, if I were to take, you know, nested paragraphs and such, that seems to come out right. Not going to worry about it. Uh, so, the next thing I want to do is at least extract a name for the thing that I'm doing, which is, this will help me notice that I should get rid of it later. Can wire up swim conversion, and I will put that in a sub. I think that's all I need. That should work just as well, and it does. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I know how swim works. I believe that I know how swim works. Now I want to have a module where I do that, that IkiWiki could use. So I happen to know, uh, off screen in my brain here, that the way that would work is that we would have a swim plugin in the IkiWiki colon colon plugin colon colon namespace. Probably be called swim. So uh, let's say that I want to test that I can load such a plugin. Maybe it doesn't do anything yet, but I want to load one. Right, and just to prove that this can fail, yeah, it doesn't work yet. So uh, 
what would be enough to make that a good test is if I could say something like uh, I would hope that that would work and if it doesn't then that's a fail and if it does that's a pass Okay, I would expect that to fail because I haven't done such a thing yet. Oh my god, something not found in my path, it's too big. Okay. So, the uh, simplest thing I could do to make that file exist would be to touch ikiwiki plugin swim.pm. But here's that Perl thing where it has to return true at the end, so let's go with putting a 1 on the end of it. Sweet, a plugin works, we're done, ship it, yay. Not really. Uh, okay, so now we can load the swim plugin, and the next thing we want to do is probably, I don't know, um, have the method in it that the API says we should have if we wanted to convert something to HTML. So that would be, it's called HTMLIs. Can call swim HTMLIs. And what this is really going to test is that there's a method by that name, not whether or not that's hooked into the API, but by convention that's the same thing, so good enough. So I want this to say, uh, you know, okay if ikiwiki plugin swim that I'm inventing can, if that returns a code ref, or really anything, but I hope it's code ref, then uh, we're good. Well, that's not a method. And it does not. So, said so we were going to call it HTMLIs, sub HTMLIs. Nope. Who knows what I did wrong? Let's go back. I really did make that mistake when I was practicing this. <laughs> okay, that'll help. Oops. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, we can call that method big whoop. It clearly doesn't do anything, so I gotta keep going. Uh, the next thing I want to prove is that oh, you know, um, maybe if I call HTMLIs passing some swim text, that I get some HTML out of it, something like that. So I'm gonna call that. Yeah, can HTMLIs via plugin instead of you know our inline swim to HTML that we invented here. So actually, what this what this tells you in TDD terms, this is not about IkiWiki right now. It's just about TDD. That uh, very often a convenient way to get something working is right there in the test code, and then when you like it, you can push it down into the production code. So I think that's what I'm going to do here. I kind of like the way this works, and I want to take it with me out of the test into HTMLIs land. So I'm going to put it in here, assuming that the API is the same, which is wrong, but whatever. And where I had swim to HTML, actually I don't care about this test anymore, remember I was just trying to prove to myself that I knew what I was doing, and I do, and so I don't need to prove that I know how to wire up swim anymore, so out that goes. And we are close. Can HTML as we plug in and write that yet? So technically, I'm not allowed to put that there yet. I don't have a failing test. Let's come back to it. Is this fun, or is this just exciting to see me try to fail, or what's going on in my brains? Yeah? Yes. Okay, cool. Anything I can do to make it more fun, more interactive? Should I ask what I should do next instead of just doing it? Hmm? Sing. Sing. La 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 la, sing. La la la. Can you sing? La 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 la, sing. Me? As I program, or separately from her? In parallel. Really? Okay. Sure, I will. How much interpretive dance? Wow. Uh, singing I can probably do while I code. Dancing is going to make it hard. I'll sing. I'll sing. I'll sing. Okay. Uh, I'll do Sprachstimme is what I'll do. 
It's the, the Schoenberg, uh, not exactly singing, not exactly like the... I can't even... Right, yeah. right, yes. Sure, fine. Dramatic reading of code. <laughs> so, uh, dot, 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 colon, colon. Uh, can HTMLIs via plugin would be a good test to have next. And uh, what I would expect there is that... This is going to be an is. Uh, Icky wiki plugin swim... HTMLIs, which does exist, because I tested that. And again, I'm going to pass in this look for p tags idea. And it should come back again the way that it had. Maybe I should have kept that around to copy and paste. And I think we had that new line at the end, so there it is. Uh, basic text turns into an HTML paragraph. Is this going to work? No, because HTMLIs doesn't do anything. But it almost did. Let's go to the code! Right, so if this works the same as it did before, because I copied and pasted it, then I bet this passes. Sweet, this actually does something. Uh, it might not do it in IkiWiki yet, and in fact, I made a couple mistakes here in the code. So let's just do a little cargo culting for a minute, because this is not pure TDD. Uh, let's look at another plugin. I mentioned Textile earlier. Here's a Textile plugin. This is the whole thing. It's 35 lines. Uh, it has this import method where it calls a couple hooks. I'm probably going to have to do something like that. It's got a get setup that I haven't done yet, and it's got HTMLIs, and this is all of it. So two problems with what I did. I don't have the prototype. I probably should. I don't know why it's there, but I assume that it's accurate. The API docs, if I were to read them, would say that. Uh, and then it's not just one scalar being passed in. It's a hash that has a key called contents. So I probably will need to do that in order for this to work. So, off we go. Cargo culting. And let's do it that way. Uh, down here. Right, so we were saying this is actually a hash. And then that's the one I want to operate on, if I had that right. Uh, and then there was a prototype, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I feel good about that. So uh, that will probably go badly for our test, because our test is not passing in the hash in that way. So let's at least catch up to the cargo cold thing. And instead of passing just the scalar, we have to pass... That's, uh-oh, I got drawing problems. Doo -doo -doo. Strange rendering. Uh, do we agree that that would be a hash with a key called content with the thing that I want? Does that look right? Okay, so if I were to run that, yeah. And just let's say if I break it, this content. Yeah, so that was important. Uh, yeah, so we probably uh, uh, adhere to the API at this point, and uh, we can get some HTML back, and now what? We are pretty close. Uh, there's a little bit of duplication here, which is the, the modules that are getting loaded uh, probably need to get loaded in the code. Let's just fast forward to where I did that well. Uh, I decided that, oh, now I can do this test driven. Um, what I'm going to do is can, right after here, can load swim plugin dependencies. So there's an IkiWiki pattern where uh, plugins that you turn on in your wiki will not just at compile time use the things that they need unless they're ubiquitous. They will defer them to when they try to do an action and eval it and print an error. So we're going to follow that pattern here. And I'm going to do it, right. let me express my test, can load swim plugin dependencies. Are we going to make it? When do we, when do we get done? We're really close. Awesome. Okay, it's a race. Uh, so what I want this test to say is an is. And it's, sorry, this, the singing is going by the wayside. We've got to prioritize here. Okay. 
errors from loading dependencies. I happen to pick this because it makes my if statement clear in a minute. Can load dependencies. Okay, uh, we ran that test and it doesn't have a subroutine, so it doesn't exist, so let's go do that. Sub errors from loading dependencies. And I want that to look like Use pegx parser. Use swim grammar. Use swim HTML. And just in case, one of those. Yeah. I don't know if this is the right thing to do, but it's pretty clear to start with. And then in HTMLIs, I can. I have to do some more cargo call thing actually. Uh, UTF 8, rather than try to understand it, I'm just doing what all the other plugins do. We were saying that is the one, and then we're working on that. And right. Uh, And that's why I named it that, is that if we can't load the dependencies, we just return the content the way that we got it. Uh, I don't know if this is going to work. What did I miss? I missed the print. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, yes, no? No. Uh, right, I got to import encode. Okay. We are so close. Uh, there's one thing left to do before I can demonstrate this to you, and that is that we actually hook this up to when a file has a .swim extension that we're the ones that deal with it. So for that one, uh, I could test drive that, but we're in a hurry, so I'm just going to tell you that I know how it works and put it in. That was that import method that we have to have, and there's a hook for HTMLIs. And we are called swim, and our method is actually called HTML as, as well. And in the CGI, if you want to make a new file with this format, it'll say that's the format. And now we should be hooked in almost, except I have to use IkiWiki to get that API. Groovy. Okay, we can do a demo and then uh, questions. So. If I go into PGHPW 2014, I have sites. So I have a few, uh, but the wiki one that I showed you should be easy. So I'm going to go into there. The wiki configuration for that one, I'm going to add libdir, which you know lets, lets you put modules that get found by IkiWiki. Uh, conveniently, here's the tree that I'm working in. And so if I rerun the setup, oops, that one then my swim code should be there. And if I go into the source directory for that one, I've got a markdown file. Also, there is a swim document. I sure hope this works. And from here, run the setup again. And let's go back to where we had the wiki. Look at that. Okay, uh, so we're on to the last slide. Thank you for bearing with me. That was very exciting. I'm fully awake now. Uh, so why was this talk called For Unix Lovers? Because, uh, as I didn't get to illustrate in a huge amount of detail, but a little bit, that IkiWiki has a bunch of individual orthogonal components that you can compose as you wish. Uh, and there's an API in the middle that makes everything fit together. And uh, also, if you're really comfortable with Unix, then this is the kind of thing you would like. And finally, because I have no idea how well it works on Windows, I'm really not sure. Uh, and then why was this talk called Architecture instead of, you know, Publishing or Web CRUD or whatever? Uh, because I hope I've managed to convey at least a little bit to you that uh, 
these building blocks have their own characteristics of behavior that are kind of complicated to understand how they all can fit together. But that once you get over the hump of understanding how they can fit together, now you can build anything you want. Uh, and you can, you can get any kind of an outcome that you need from a simple set of ingredients all from the same source, which is pretty unusual. You don't need rails for one kind of thing. You don't need Drupal for another kind of thing. Except in rare cases, almost everything that I build these days as a website is icky wiki because it's an architecture that I can always do what I need. So, made it to the end. Any questions? Yes. I have a question. Am I crazy, or was that lucky that that worked out? Or both? <laughs> some luck. Some yeah. I think you should chalk up to uh, the technique and skill. Okay. I'll take it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. uh, any questions about things that you saw that I kind of glossed over? Maybe not in the coding section. Maybe in the in the explanatory section. Like how, how icky wiki is like something that you know or unlike something that you know, more specifics about that. Uh, anybody interested in borrowing me for a few minutes and setting up an icky wiki on their computer after this? Cool? Cool? Okay. Uh, my name is Amitai. I'm a software development coach. I can just barely do also. Uh, and if you want help with icky wiki, come find me afterward. Thank you.